Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Donetsk, Battle for the Airport. This is a game designed by Ryan Kirk and published by Tiny Battle Publishing. This is a game that was initially in Ya Magazine, I believe it was issue number 9, and it is, uh, which is from Flying Pig, the parent company of Tiny Battle. So they've taken it and, as they say on their website, rebadged it, placed it in the Ziploc line from Tiny Battle Publishing. And being that this is a Ziploc game, we're not going to have to worry about uh, back-of-the-box reading. So we'll just go right into the components. You get your rule book, your counter sheet, and the map, which I'm going to lay out real quick. This is uh, a thin paper map. Detail on the map looks really nice. It's done by Ilya Kudryashov. Ilya's work is always top-notch, in my opinion. The airport is the predominant area of the battle, which it was in real life. And there is some surrounding uh, areas here as well, some suburban areas it looks like that you may also be dealing with during the battle. But uh, along the side here, it looks like it's the terrain effects chart that explains everything to you. It's kind of small, but be it this is a small map and you're going to be right down on top of it, it's not that big of a deal. This is uh, going to be a game that is primarily going to be played, you know, solitaire or with two people. So it's not like you need to see across the board uh, from a great distance. They are using the obfuscated hexes on this. So you're only seeing the corners of the hexes. You're not seeing the entire hex outline, which I have a love-hate relationship with. I love it on some maps. I hate it on others, only for the fact that it can be a little difficult to read uh, the hexes you're in. That's just from my own experience. I, I'm sure everyone has their own opinion on it. I don't know how it works with this yet. I've not played it, so uh, I cannot attest to that. And we'll take a look at the counter sheet that comes with the game. These are the Ukrainian forces. These are the DPR slash Russian forces. And then you have admin counters down at the bottom. And we'll take a closer look at these counters. Uh, there are several numbers on the counters, so we'll go over them real quick. You have a 12 slash 8, 8, a 10, and a 6 for this T64. The 12 is for hard targets, 8 is for soft targets. The middle 8 number here is for range, and 10 is for defense value. And then the 6 is the movement value. Each of them is going to have, obviously, different values. The BTR 80s up here with the circle around their 8 movement value means that they can transport units. And we'll take a look at the rule book for the game. This is an 11 page rule book, 12 if you want to count the back page. Uh, table of contents here tells us we have the components and general rules, sequence of play, activation, movement, fire support, special units, special terrain, multi-level buildings, and then your scenarios which start on page eight. So eight pages of rules, not a tremendous amount to digest to get this game on a table, something you can throw down pretty quickly in an evening. Explanation of your counters, which we've already looked at. And we get into the dice. The game uses three dice. You have two D6 and a D4 that you will need to supply. This comes with no dice for this game because it is a Ziploc game. Uh, stacking in this game, three infantry squads and two vehicles per hex is the max. Any infantry that's loaded in transport vehicles does not count. Heavy weapons and leader teams uh, also do not count against that stacking limit. Then we get into the sequence of play, initiative action phase, the initiative and all the steps for initiative and how that works. Get into your activation, leader team activation, unit actions, movement, terrain, road movement, transport, pinned unit movement, enemy occupied hexes, fire combat, there's LOS and fire resolution, leader team activated fire groups, snipers, fire limitations, combat results, reduced leader teams, pinned effects, overwatch and reaction fire. I do like that they've got overwatch in this game. It says here, a unit that spends its entire activation assuming Overwatch status is marked with an Overwatch marker. It may then fire during an enemy unit's activation. It may fire at full strength in reaction to an, any enemy movement or fire attack within its line of sight. It may fire at any point during an enemy unit's movement in its LOS or immediately after an enemy's fire attack is resolved in its LOS. Leader team combined fire is not allowed for Overwatch fire. Each unit must fire individually. And then the overwatch status is retained until the unit fires, suffers an adverse combat result, causing loss of overwatch status, uh, has an enemy unit move into its hex, or is activated gun on the following game turn. Uh, I like the sound of that uh, because overwatch is a very valid tactic. You're going to want to use it, especially in a tactical game. You want to have that support fire ready to respond if any of your movement element gets into contact. Then you have fire support, fire support availability, and placement, resolution, smoke, then special units, there are wrecks, heavy setup weapons, and special terrain, multi-level buildings, moving effects, fire support, spotting effects, and resolution effects. Then we get into the scenarios. The first scenario is the first battle of Donetsk Airport, which is May 26, 2014. Then we get to the second battle, which was September 28, 2014. And then we have the third battle, which is counterattacks November 2014. 
and then the final assault which was from January of 2015. So overall the game covers eight months of real time with four different battles which is good you get four different battles in uh, one little package so that's a good thing to have. And then we get into the game notes and that goes to the last page and then you have an ad for sticks and stones then we have the player aid on the back of the book. And that is a look at everything that comes inside of Donetsk, Battle for the Airport, a game designed by Ryan Kirk and published by Tiny Battle Publishing. If you have the Yaw Magazine game already, you don't need to upgrade to this. It's not like there's some major update or anything. There's probably some errata corrections, but not anything you can't already get online. If you're a completionist and you love this game, sure, go for it. But for those who are looking for a tight, small, tactical game, this is something that you're going to want to check out. Eight pages of rules, four scenarios, it's in a 20 something dollar range. This is definitely something you can pick up if you're a tactical fan. Small form factor makes it easy to transport with you. Uh, take it on the road when you're on vacation or when you are taking business trips, you have something to, to play and keep you occupied in your hotel room. Easy to get on the table, easy to knock out a game or two in an evening uh, with solitaire or with a friend. Well, I hope that helps you guys out. If you've been curious about this one, if you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in guys. See you next time.